and good morning. <laughs> so I made a mistake, or I mean, yeah, I'll just take the fault for it. I didn't think that Google would have changed the times on the calendar that I had for putting it because I'm on the East Coast and I didn't put in East Coast time. So my flight's actually out at like 2.30. So I found out when I woke up this morning, packed up, got ready to leave the hotel, and then went to go print out my, my tickets. I just checked in at the hotel and printed, it, printed out the tickets uh, at the same place. I was like, oh, my flight is at 2.30. Wow, okay. So, I mean, I just sat in the lobby, finished up some work before heading off to Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast. And then I went to uh, the Knoxville Visitor Center to kind of check out what there is to see around here because I, I was pretty sure I, I did most of the stuff ready. And uh, true enough, yeah, I did. It's uh, Everything else is like adventure sports, like going kayaking or, or mountain biking or something, which would be awesome, but I obviously don't have the time to do so, so I opted for the last thing that was on my list that I didn't do yesterday, which was a, a Civil War tour of the city. And currently, I'm in the Old Gray Cemetery, which was advised to me by the people over at the Visitor's Center to come to. And I mean, it's a pretty large cemetery. It was built in 1850 and I mean, one of the crazy things for me to think about is like how kids would be playing where there are tombstones and everything. And what I mean by that was this cemetery was designed with the idea that it could be a rural park and for families to come have outings at. It's why it's kind of a tourist destination, I guess you could say today. I mean, that and the fact that it's one of the places that has the Civil War soldiers that fought against each other, buried, and they're like separated by this like tiny little street. It's interesting because you can see like the design of this place was kind of made, it's like a nicer cemetery and that was kind of done on purpose because what they thought they'd do is they'd have this whole Victorian era type style of art going into the tombstones so there's a lot of statues and stuff like that here and that way people could come have a picnic and come like have fun in a cemetery it was also built kind of in the middle of the city so that it was accessible to for people to get to which i'm pretty interested in i am in a part of knoxville called the old city and i don't know if it's picking it up but they're actually doing some like landscaping right now and they're trying to cut down the trees uh, which there is quite a bit of overgrowth so I understand why they're doing it also fall and winter is coming so they're chopping down trees and grinding them up turning it into mulch so hopefully that's not coming through but yeah uh, it's a pretty interesting place it'd probably be pretty spooky at night being that it's quite early in the morning right now I mean it's already really, really warm, so I don't know how much of this I'm going to be doing before just going to sit down at the airport, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see. Anyhow, I'll uh, check back in in a moment. Alright, and I am back in San Francisco. Boy, it is the next morning. I am... I was sleepy up pretty early. So, I spent a little bit more time than I thought at that cemetery walking around. Before I knew it, it was, a, <laughs> it was noon, and I had to get up and, and out of there because I wanted to make sure that I made my flight. Um, even though the flight was at 2.30, I just went ahead and hopped back in the car, drove all the way over to the airport. The big thing was, I didn't know how to return the vehicle. Like, they're always different at every place I've been, so I wanted to make sure that I had that going for me. And that's what I did. I went and returned the vehicle. That was easy enough. And then went into the airport. I already checked in earlier that morning, as I said before. So I already had my tickets, which was kind of nice. And then I just went straight through security and went to Ruby Tuesdays <laughs> to have uh, a little meal for uh, before I got on the plane. Finishing up that meal, I 
which was pr pretty basic, just steak, rice, and green beans, if I recall correctly. And just went to my gate and waited a little bit before figuring out that the airport is tiny and I could actually walk around a little bit. There was this kind of art installation that they had inside the airport, which I took a quick glance at. That was actually pretty neat. They had all sorts of different like photos and things like that, as well as a few, I think it was like artifacts. I can't really remember now. Yeah, it was, it was cool. I mean, you know, for a tiny airport, I think they had like 12 gates. So walking from one end of the airport to the other only took like maybe five minutes. <laughs> and then I got on to probably the smallest like professional plane that I've ever gotten on in flying. Um, meaning that like for a, an American Airlines that was run by Mesa Airlines plane, it was like a Learjet. It had two engines in the back and was really tiny. It was two seats by two seats on each side with a very narrow center thing. It was so small that my my carry-on bag actually did not fit in the overhead bin. I actually had to put it in the uh, under the seat in front of me, which I was fine with, but I was really glad that I gate-checked my uh, roller bag to go all the way to San Francisco so that way I could just go grab it when it comes out here and I didn't have to worry about it at all at Dallas or anything like that. And a lot of the people that didn't choose to do that, they had to wait in a line at Dallas for them to pick up their suitcases and like bring it back up because they still had to go underneath the plane. I figured if it's going underneath the plane anyways, you might as well just gate check it and let it fly all the way to San Francisco or to your final destination for you. So getting out at Dallas, I had about an hour. So I decided that I was gonna go ahead and find my gate first, which was actually in the next terminal, which at Dallas, if you're not at the right terminal, it's kind of like San Francisco now, which kind of sucks, is you need to take their Sky Tram over. So I did that to make sure that I, I was in the correct terminal, which I had to go from A to B. Furthermore, I then went and got a meal at the terminal so that I could bring it onto the plane. Um, I went to a place called the Salt Lick <laughs> um, for some Texas barbecue. Uh, I got brisket, which was nice. Went to my gate, hopped onto the next plane uh, that was headed towards San Francisco. And that's pretty much how the, the trip ends. Yeah, a buddy of mine came and picked me up and brought me home and I kind of just did some stuff on my computer, just surfed the net a little, watched a little YouTube, and then decided to go ahead and call it a night. But overall, a super successful trip in Tennessee with a great drive to go with it. So yeah, um, and I think we we're gonna do a lot of business out of the trip, which is kind of cool too. I mean, I was just there to pay the bills, really, so. <laughs> Anyhow, until the next trip. Peace.